Okay, good morning, and um, I'm uh, Sablongi Lainalam from Baharda University. My presentation focuses uh, on uh, Beyond the Numbers, Women's Inclusion in Political Process in Ethiopia. So this presentation will try to address the following major uh, concerns. The first one is uh, I'll try to present about a brief over overview of Ethiopian women's representation in political leadership. I'll just try to highlight the imperial and post-imperial regime experiences. And then uh, uh, I will raise some arguments of gender and political representation and which one really holds water in Ethiopia and by whom. Uh, uh, this presentation will also try to capture the emerging challenges of women in political leadership in Ethiopian context. And I have also a few remarks on what to do uh, to transform women political leadership from symbolic or descriptive representation to a very substantive and influential representation. So when we see our experience of uh, women political rep representation in Ethiopia, we can boldly categorize into two, the imperial region and uh, the post-imperial region. Uh, so when we see the imperial region, even though the political culture was highly dominated by that patriarchal uh, concept. Uh, there were very powerful queens and wives of kings. We can name Kuhn Sheva, who was uh, linked uh, with Solomon Dynasty. We have uh, Prince Yodit, of the founder of Zagwe Dynasty in Ethiopia. Kuhn Ilani, Empress Mentu, who have impressed I2, uh, who concert mm -hmm. uh, Imperial Mary League during uh, the Italian invasion. So we had this substantive role in their uh, leadership during the imperial era, era even though the, the overall culture was dominated patriarchally. But when we come to the post-imperial regime, there is a confusion of role in uh, women's political representation. Uh, even though there are uh, women who played an undeniable role during the social movements of the popular revolution during the 1960s and 70s. We had women who have uh, played a lot in the Workers' Party of Ethiopia during the Derg region. Uh, there were lots of, I mean, so many associations and women committees starting from the, uh, the very beginning of uh, early 1980s. Uh, women played a great role in the armed groups of liberation, pro liberation fronts in different groups. Uh, though their, their, their role was not as such uh, acknowledged and well documented, uh, we, can, we can see their role was undeniable during the post-imperial regime and during the transitional period of the Ethiopian governmental systems. But post, when we see the post-1991 uh, uh, era, women participation in the state politics has been increasing uh, uh, in pace. Uh, uh, in 2015, we can see that 212, almost 38.8 percent of seats of the House of People representation uh, is taken by women. So we can see that, I mean, at least uh, in number of representation, women's participation is increasing in the country. And we can see the Prime Minister Abis administration, the current administration. Uh, as another historic move in the women's role of uh, in the political participation uh, in Ethiopia. So after the reform and the coming of the, uh, prime, the new Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed, uh, we can see that uh, half of the Abiy's new cabinet is made up of women. And uh, the president, the Ethiopian president, now it's, it's a woman. Uh, the head of the Supreme Court is a woman and the head of the Electoral Commission, is a woman. So we, women are starting holding a key positions, like even the Minister of Education, Trade, Transport, Minister of Peace, even the, the defense, the Minister of Defense was uh, woman, a woman. Uh, so we can see the large, large increase of women's representation in the executive branches. Uh, and the change is very remarkable. It was 10% of, 10% uh, during the, I mean, before 2017. So we can see a move from 10% to 47.6 in 2019. And this, uh, rem I mean, this change uh, brought uh, Ethiopia into the third, uh, one, into one of the top three uh, African countries uh, by putting women in ministerial position next to Rwanda and South Africa. 
So where is the swinging? Where is the, the dwelling up? Is, uh, despite these recent political strides, women in Ethiopia face systemic inequality. Uh, still, Ethiopia is ranked uh, one of the, the least countries uh, with various gender equality indexes. Uh, we were in 121 out of 160 countries uh, in various gender inequality measures. And the claim that women are half the sky is more than a glitch. And now when it comes to the real political representation, and uh, when we see the rendering of true women legacy. So it's not yet clear how the improved representation of women in the federal government really affect the status of uh, over 50 million women and girls in Ethiopia. Uh, so one of the, uh, in my opinion, one of the, the challenge is the arguments which are widely circulated in Ethiopia about gender representation affected the role of women in the, their leadership. So uh, I have brought a few arguments and I'll try to catch up which argument is really uh, accepted by who, my second uh, area of uh, presentation. So as we see symbolic arguments uh, uh, argues that representation of women uh, helps to bring more role models so that they can attract other women to leadership arena. Uh, the critical mass argument uh, instead argues that uh, women, they can achieve uh, solidarity of purpose so that they can represent uh, uh, the, the other women's interest. So these arguments are widely circulating, circulating among Ethiopian civilians, associations. You can hear them in the families, in the schools, why, why women should be represented in the political leadership system. When we ask this question, uh, the majority of the civilians may raise this argument, the symbolic representation and critical mass representation. But when we see the other arguments, for example, justice argument, the democracy arguments, which uh, uh, claim that women account for approximately half of the population, so they have the right to be represented, the equal representation of women and enhanced democracy, democratization of governances. These arguments are usually the views of the scholars, the scholars and partly shared by the political leaders in Ethiopia. So they are not as just bought by the major the, major, the, the mass, the civilians, instead they, were, they are mainly uh, circulated within the scholastic view of uh, uh, Ethiopian uh, professionals. And the rest the argument is, is the experience arguments, the interest arguments, uh, women experience are different from men. Uh, so they, they do politics and business differently. And the interest argument, they have different uh, interests from that of men, so they need to be articulated differently. These arguments are very vivid concepts in our context, and they are perceived as radical feminist view, which uh, Ethiopia couldn't afford it for now. Uh, so even th these arguments are considered as a threat for the well-established conservative society. So one of the, the concerns we have as a professional interested in the area of gender and political representation is how we can coin the arguments of gender representation in the Ethiopian context. Um, and we do have different other concerns regarding women politics. The, the, the over, I mean, the bouncing concerns which were uh, holding uh, throughout the, the the, 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 the country's history and the current context of change is, uh, even though women politicians are not elected, uh, they are not elected positions, uh, they are just there to make quota and the government is bringing women into the leadership position uh, to get more attention from the global influencing actors. So this symbolic gesture uh, hijacks women's question, I mean, into the party uh, needs. Uh, so there is there's this fear in the society that women are in power and they are expected to be more loyal to the, the political, their political party needs, and they are not really representing the concerns of the majority women and girls. So uh, we can, we can uh, bring here an example. Currently, there are 21 kidnapped university students, mainly they are women, I mean girls. 
And we can see we can see that women ministry at ministerial level, at top management level, they didn't show up for strong solidarity to speak up on this uh, on the behalf of these women. I mean, these girls. So uh, they were uh, highly criticized for uh, they are just in that position for the sake of uh, holding the, the party in its for symbolic gesture. They are not just influencing the government, even to. Uh, rescue girls who are kidnapped uh, recently. Uh, there are also other emerging concerns. Currently, we are in a state of crisis, ethnic centered crisis. So, the role of women in their leadership to bring peace and security in the country uh, is not as such visible. And so, even though the uh, Abiy administration brought so remarkable changes in uh, bringing women into the top management level. The, um, the original, this high-spirited, welcoming, and embarrassing uh, appoint, I mean, uh, acceptance is not there during uh, uh, this uh, time. So it's more, more likely replaced by resentment and concerns about the state fragility. Even the prime minister, it's, I mean, himself is uh, accused as he's not a man enough uh, to maintain law, order, law and order in the nation. And he is bullied for surrounding himself by powerless women who are risking the country peace and security. Uh, so what to do? What can we do? We do have this opportunity of bringing more women to the political leadership, but we have also these concerns of uh, more of descriptive representation, symbolic gesture, and uh, they are not as such visible in bringing change in the country, uh, current crisis and in the overall development. So one thing, which is obviously we need to work hard to move from this descriptive representation. We need to acknowledge that women are in the very descriptive representation and they need to move to substantive representation. Um, uh, thus we need to reshape, well, my, my argument here is we need to reshape what we are circulating our argument is uh, regarding the need of gender and the representation in the political arena. We need to reshape the, our scholastic arguments regarding gender and representation uh, to the, the mass. Uh, and even those women who are represented in the political uh, system, they need to question themselves how they are building movements and acting on the collective responsibility beyond their personal ladder uh, climbing, climbing. And they are now in power. So what does this uh, ascension to power mean for the other women? They need to ask and. Uh, uh, reflect on these major questions. Uh, the other one is we need also to address the capacity gaps. So, uh, so far the, the most, I mean, the, 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 the interest is uh, to bring more women into the political leadership, but representation of gender should not be limited to the political leadership arena as, uh, only. We need to bring more women, I mean, to the media representation. We, do, we need to reshape the media representation and uh, we need also to talk about gender representation in the area of business, corporates, and others. Because women who lack civil and economic rights, they are not able to exercise their political rights fully. And uh, so the other dimensions of gender and representation, which are neglected so far by uh, the government, should be given full focus uh, of attention. Um, moreover, those women who are getting the opportunity of leading uh, the countries, I mean, and uh, earning the, the leadership positions, uh, need to prove that they have the capacity to assume that level and they need to make uh, critical decisions. Uh, they need to establish strong networks so that uh, they can help each other. And the other one is to uh, have a succession plan so that they can put and uh, grooming young women leaders to assume leadership positions in the future as well. Uh, the other one is obviously we need to address the structural barriers. Still, we do have so many discriminatory laws and institutions which limit uh, women's ability uh, to run uh, in office. So these things need to be given focus because um, uh, we are expecting uh, to women to magically address issues of uh, uh, other women or to engage in the, other, in the country's overall, overall development without capacitating uh, their leadership uh, ability. Uh, there are also women leaders often face bias from public uh, criticism, intimidation, because they just they are just women. So addressing structural barriers need to be uh, uh, a focus from the concerned bodies. 
So these are what I have about the current uh, move of gender and representation in the political arena of Ethiopia. Thank you for attending this presentation. That's it. And if, if